friends welcome to the sixth lecture on the online course title offshore structures under special loads including fire resistant design today in the sixth lecture we will talk about the continuation of new generation offshore platforms In the last lecture, we already said that the offshore structures are essentially governed by form based design. We also said that the lateral loads imposed by waves wind current etcetera which are conventional loads or alleviated by large i should say relative displacement phenomenon. That is the structures are made compliant, it means flexible, so that they have relative displacement which enables them to counteract the lateral loads. Now, the question comes why one is interested to revise the existing compliant structural forms. On the other hand, what is the necessity for the formation of new generation platforms? Let us answer this question by understanding the structural action of let us say a TLP. We all know that if there are three axes at a specific point, call this as x y and z. We know that the surge is a displacement degree along x and sway is a displacement degree along y and heave is a displacement along z direction. We also know rotation about x axis is roll rotation about y axis is pitch and rotation about z axis is yaw. Interestingly, these 6 degrees of freedom are clearly divided into two sets, one is flexible degree and other is stiff degrees. Let us say what are these flexible degrees? We do agree that flexible degrees of freedom are those whose time periods are very, very large because we know omega is root of k by m is also 2 pi by t. So, for larger period omega will be lesser, for lower omega for the same mass stiffness will be lesser, for a system whose stiffness is lesser we call that as flexible. So, the degrees of freedom where the periods are very large are flexible degrees. So, we do agree in a TLP surge, sway and yaw have periods ranging somewhere from 70 seconds to 120 seconds. 
when you talk about the other set of degrees like he roll and pitch these periods vary anywhere from 2 to 5 seconds. So, lower the period higher the stiffness. So, stiff degrees could be heel, roll and pitch whereas, flexible degrees could be surge, sway and yaw. Please pay attention to this figure based on this figure one can easily understand now surge is along x and sway is along y and yaw is a rotation is a rotation about the z plane. So, one can now say very clearly T L P's are flexible in horizontal plane. let us say x y plane, because surge, sway and yaw motions which are marked on the x y plane have high periods. Whereas, on the vertical plane the responses marked could be heel, could be roll and pitch which are very low period therefore, it is very stiff in vertical plane. Therefore, the original idea which was conceived in offshore platform design was a hybrid concept, where flexibility is introduced in horizontal plane, whereas stiffness was ensured about the vertical plane. There is a very interesting reason why this design was conceived. If you look at one specific degree of freedom let us say heave response in the vertical plane, we need to limit the heave response because of operational convenience. to reduce the change in tension in tendons, because this may cause further fatigue failure. Also to reduce the consequences, please understand this term of change in buoyancy caused by added mass. Now, one can ask me a question that okay, operation convenience because heave motion happens on vertical plane. If heave response is very high, one will not be able to do the drilling operation. So, this is acceptable. Reduction in change in tension because that is how the change in tension is imposed because of heave motion. You want to reduce that change in tension therefore, you can reduce the fatigue failure this also acceptable, but one is not able to agree and easily understand to reduce the consequences caused by the added mass contribution. So, I want you to pay attention to the articulated towers and the guide towers where the recentering capability was dependent on buoyancy. So, recentering was faster, induced a single point failure. may be in the universal joint or may be in the spot can or may be in the hinged connection. So, this effect 
was to be avoided. Therefore, people felt that I want to retain the stiffness in the vertical plane. However, the whole design of hybrid concept of TLP was slightly violated in spar platform, because in spar platform if you look at the heave periods, the heave periods can go slightly higher than or let us say 20 to 40 seconds. And of course, spar platforms did not receive any support from the mooring lines. Whereas, TLPs were solely dependent on the restoration happened by tendons. So, people conceived a different idea in a spar boy by violating slightly this norm on a vertical plane by keeping it heave slightly flexible. But however, in both these concepts of new designs which evolved in 80s till 2010 etcetera, there were some difficulties. Let us see what is the difficulty. One difficulty is there is a clear band separation of frequencies, one is higher, one is lower. Higher in sense very high and lower in sense very low. Though people said interestingly, this is an advantageous feature because higher periods with low frequencies enabled easy installation. The system could remain afloat even when the tether is damaged. So, therefore, top side is saved, but there is a main issue here by having this clear band separation of frequency, you are making the platform viable sensitive to both wind and waves, because we all know wind is a low frequency phenomena whereas, wave is slightly a high frequency phenomena compared to wind. So, now you are making the platform sensitive to both this. So, you have to design to counteract both these kind of frequencies and make the design safe. You understand the problem now, the complexity of making the platform sensitive to both bands of frequencies essentially arose because of the hybrid concept conceived in the design of offshore platforms. That is the first issue. The second issue could be people are now focusing on only the rigid body motion. One may ask me a question, so what is rigid body motion? The whole platform for example, at ELP for example, a spar boy which may have or may not have a mooring line does not matter, has rigid body motion that the whole system is displaced both by rotation 
and translation at C G of the mass. So, on the other hand, there is no difference between the substructure element and superstructure element under the global response. Now, what does this statement mean? Let us say D L P has a water level here. I would call this the column and the pontoon as substructure element. The one which is above water may be including the derrick, including etcetera will be a superstructure element. Both of them undergo the same global response measured about the C G of the platform. So, what does it mean? I have a wave action which is happening on the tether and the members which is transformed to the hull or to the deck. So, the wave response which happens on the column member and the pontoon or the deep draft caisson in case of spar is transformed to the hull. This is undesirable. this we do not need, because the wave response happening on the substructure should not be transformed to the hull. Now, the question why it is so? If the substructure response is not transformed to the hull, it would be always better that the hull or the top deck can remain operational. even under larger responses of the members under water. So, the request the requirement is can we isolate the superstructure from the supporting substructure. Before we say can we do it or not, what would be the advantage if we do this? The advantage if you do this could be wave force causing response on the substructure elements will need to only undergo local displacements. They will not transfer or influence the deck due to wave action. So, that advantage we get. Alternatively, wind forces acting on the superstructure, which can cause high moments on the deck C G, will now not influence the substructure elements. So, this concept is not new in conceiving structural geometry by design. This concept is otherwise being used 
in structures under earthquake engineering what we call as base isolation. So, the idea here is isolate the sub and superstructure by a medium by a layer which then does not transform the undesirable activities or responses vice versa. By doing so, we have one main demerit. What is the demerit? The system should remain stiff in heave degree of freedom. We already said why it is required to remain stiff in heave degree because it saves the platform from fatigue failure. It ensures a gentle recentering under the action of added mass what we call as variable submergence. The catch here is it ensures a gentle recentering which in firm confirms safe operability. Of course, we also know if the system is moored and turned down supported it will reduce fatigue failure probabilities. So, we need to ensure even in the new concept of design that stiffness should be maintained in heave degree. Can we have a platform of this type which has been conceived by people in offshore engineering which is still in the research development stage, but no such platform been constructed in prototype physically, but lot of research work is happening around the world to see the feasibility of studying this kind of geometry and its possibility and viability for deep and ultra deep waters. That is what we say as new generation platforms. Now, let us see what are these platforms all about. When you talk about new generation platforms, we need to keep in mind that the deck responses should remain local. What do you mean by local? So, deck responses vertical plane. So, let us see the next lecture. How this idea can be conceptualized. Thank you very much.